continue to get closer to Holy Week and ultimately um, Easter Vigil. We think wait, this past weekend we had um, the man born blind with the baptism, he, with baptism and entering the, the the pool and being cleansed at the pool of um, uh, Siloam. And here we have the, the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel. And just, you know, you had life, the, the water that came forth from the temple that just bared abundant fruit, that just brought life. Um, and so, of course, we want our minds to be thinking in, in of who's the new temple, who says that the, the temple will be um, destroyed in three days. And then Jesus, we know Jesus is the new temple. What do we, where's, and, and on the cross, the, the water that came forth from his side, life-giving water, baptism. It's a beautiful image of, and of Ezekiel 40, 47 in our first reading. And our gospel, what really we just want to focus and, and um, just focus on the response of this man where Jesus' eyes are locked on, it says there was, what did it say, uh, that large number of ill, blind, lame. But Jesus is focused on this one man, and apparently he, he knew that this, this man's been sick for, um, and in his current state for 38 years. And Jesus approaches him, asks them, do you wish to be well? And notice the response. His response is interesting. He doesn't decide, you know, decisively or enthusiastically say yes. He, he, he just complains. And he doesn't Notice he doesn't even complain um, about his affliction. He complains and kind of moans to give this this story and says, "No one's, no one, I, there's no one to put me into the pool. You know, when I'm on my way, someone gets there before me." There's some commentators that point to the fact here that the problem with this man isn't ultimately his his illness. But the, the, what's really wrong with him is this, this sickness of pessimism. Or he's, he's, he's got this, um, he, he's sick with sadness. John, um, St. John Cashin, um, church, church father, wrote that sadness, um, he, he, he even mentioned that sadness in of itself is a, is a deadly sin, is a capital sin, um, where you know, it's, it's, it's not quite a capital sin. He, he, you know, um, I think it was Gregory the Great mentioned how uh, it, it's kind of behind the sin of sloth um, in, in so far as that it can easily, it's like sadness can lead to separation and isolation, both from our loved ones and from God. Now, like sadness is just, it, it, it's a human experience that we can experience every day. So like sadness is not a sin. Um, a, a lot of times, I think, especially today, we, when, when the feeling of sadness comes, we just, we don't want to, it's like, let, let me go on the phone. Let me turn the radio on. Let me do anything other than just confront and be sad. But sad, like being sad is a human experience and it's okay to be sad. Where it becomes a problem is when we don't recognize it, when we don't become aware of it, and we're not relating it to God. I mean, look at the Psalms, the Psalms of lament are just, there, there's many Psalms of lament of, okay, I'm aware of the sadness, I'm relating it now to the Lord, and I'm actually in communion with the Lord in my sadness. So that's one side that we don't do, I think, well today is just, okay, sadness comes, I, I, I don't wanna go there, I don't wanna be sad. The other side is that, that like sadness goes too far and it's not related to the Lord and it, and it slips into, I think what this man has had for 38 years, it slips into self-pity. And self-pity is not, not good, it's never good. Self-pity I think is really along the lines of what um, acedia is, and that is a capital sin. And um, Aquinas, describes asadia or acedia as sadness that comes from unwillingness to tackle difficulties to attain something good. And so it, it leads to inaction of doing the good. 
a lot of times, we, so, so the, the spiritual sloth or asadia, it's, it uh, can experience it towards like the reluctance of entering into the difficulty of prayer. Prayers are good, but um, the, the, a, a sadness that comes from the unwillingness to tackle the difficulties. And, you know, maybe a, a question just to ask ourselves today with and to pray with is, like, what's my, what's my reaction to sadness? Sadness is a human reaction. You, 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 could, you could experience sadness multiple times today. I think a lot of it depends on how attentive we are with our thoughts and our feelings. When I experience sadness, how do I, what's my reaction to it? Do I, do I lend more? Do I, do, do I have a tendency more to, uh, I, I, I don't like, I'm not going to be sad. I don't like to be sad. I'm not going to recognize it. I'm not going to relate it to the Lord. Is it more towards that end do I go? Or is it more towards the end of self-pity? And does that lead to, and then for us to recognize of how that shapes my life, how that shapes my relationships, how that leads to an action. You know, I just think of maybe the, the habits that we conform, the habits that we have, relationships that we're in that maybe don't progress or don't change because of self-pity. And the, the antidote, of course, is on either, on whichever extreme we, we tend towards, it, it, the antidote is, is, is Jesus. It's to be with him. It's to relate those feelings of sadness, to recognize them, to become aware of them, and to be with Jesus with him, who is, who is life, who wants to be there, who is there, and he wants to share and invite us into communion with him and the Trinity.